An Olathe couple loses 150 pounds combined. They credit getting a life coach, cutting out fast foods, and a third thing they refuse to discuss. Pacemaker surgery for a four-year-old Olathean ferret named Zelda was a complete success. She's recovering now, but her doctors say that pretty soon she'll be back home getting lodged behind the refrigerator. And the Fazoli's down on South Alden Street was robbed, and the 19-year-old waiter was punched in his face. Come on, people. The breadsticks ain't that bad. All this and more on Good, Good Morning, morning Olathe. Good morning, Olathe. I'm Mike Watley. And I'm Candace Kostopoulos. And we are just pleased as punch to be back in the saddle after, uh, what is it, a three week break? With my stepkids, it felt like three weeks. Yeah, that's whatever you were talking about for you, Candace. Now, did you do anything fun over the break? Uh, you know, not really. I was still on that Mediterranean raw food keto diet, so I spent part of it in a, like, hunger-induced rage. Ah! Uh, <laughs> but also, that might have just been Greg and the four kids. I bet having a bunch of kids could make just about anyone snap. <laughs> but don't you mean five kids there, Candace? Yes, you know what? It is five kids. <laughs> they always just kind of blend together after a while. But actually, on the way to the studio, right out front, I found an empty parking meter. So I just tied them all up to that, and there was still 17 minutes on it. <laughs> so things are really working out for me today. What about you? Did you do anything fun over the hiatus? You know what? I did. I went down to the Capitol building where they have that women's march. Oh my god, Mike, I'm so proud. Well, yeah, and they were just blowing my mind with all sorts of facts about the gender inequality. For instance, did you know that women make 70 cents for every dollar a man makes? Even the hot women. Well, I hope nothing like that is going on here at Good Morning Olathe, huh? <laughs> No, I think payroll knows you wouldn't take that kind of guff. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> don't hurt me. Seriously, don't hurt me. Okay. <laughs> all right. But those women, you know what? Uh, they were making a lot of sense. They were pretty easy on the eyes. I think they got themselves a repeat customer. <laughs> well, just don't go asking for a 30% raise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I don't want to get on that list of yours. Did I tell you about my list? Oh yeah. You shoved me into that closet on the second floor and you just screamed in my face that I'm not on the list and then you shouted, yet. And then you locked me in there. <laughs> yeah, oh. that sounds like me on a cleanse. Oh yeah. Uh, but you know what? Speaking of weight loss, how about that Olathe couple that lost 150 pounds, huh? They did it by getting themselves a life coach and cutting out that fast food and also a third thing. And I pressed them, they wouldn't tell me what it was. Mike, have you ever worked with a life coach? Well, you know, I never worked with one, but I knew a guy, Stuart was his name, great guy, crippling gambling addiction. We used to bet on cockfights together. You know where Sue and Craig Smith are not going to be going anytime soon if they cut fast food? That Fazoli's. Yeah, that waiter got punched right in his face. Yeah, that is really too bad that the violence escalated that bad. Well, here's a question for you, Candace. Mm -hmm. If you were in that Fazoli's, would you try to get involved? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Over the course of my life, I've taken 26 thousand hours of kickboxing classes. Isn't that incredible? I figured out the math. Wow. And I am always just dying for a chance to actually use those skills in the real world and it just never comes up. I am trying to get in fights day and night and it is just not happening for me. Wow. Yeah. In fact, whenever I'm in a new situation, I always, the first thing is I enter the room and I try to imagine, okay, if a crazed maniac came in here, how would I defend myself against him? That is why I never sit with my back facing the door. <laughs> I have noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> now, Here's a question. Let's say a crazed maniac runs in here to mm -hmm. Good Morning Olathe. Oof. What do you do? Easy. Take that fork, <laughs> gouge him in the eyes, then quick, <laughs> knee to the forehead. Wow, two shots right to the face. Yeah, but I only need one. The second's for me. Well, let's move on to something a little more heartwarming. Or should I say heart starting? That is right. That Olathe ferret named Zelda had the first ever successful ferret pacemaker surgery. Wow, that is incredible. That's really amazing. We're all very happy for Zelda, and we hope she makes it home soon. Yeah. Hey, what do you think we would put in a little ferret gift basket? <laughs> pellets? Do they eat pellets? How, where would you get I don't know. pellets? pellets. Yeah, I mean, we can look it up. Thing won't get my thumbprint. Come on. <laughs> You're my phone. I shouldn't have to prove it. Okay, I'm sending it to you. Oh, got it. Okay, great. 
You know, we've got a great show for you today. That's right. We're going to check in on the Wild West days. Get along, little doggy. <laughs> and then we're going to go behind the scenes at Olathe's new outdoor sculpture exhibit. Then we're going to talk to an expert on the emerald ash borer infestation. And finally, we'll get a community opinion about the new Garmin headquarters going up in town. All this and more on Good, Good Morning, Morning Olathe. Olathe. One morning, Gregor Samsa awoke from uneasy dreams to find himself transformed into a giant cockroach. Did you eat all my pita chips? My bad! And now his roommate has to deal with it. The Metamorphosis, coming this summer to CBS. Well, it is Wild West Days here in Olathe, and everyone is getting on board. Our reporter, James Peterberg, is at Mahaffey Stagecoach Stop. James? Hi, Mike. Or should I say, howdy? <laughs> Perfect. Just working on my old West talk. You know, I might be a rookie when it comes to yodeling and putting beans on the old fire, but... These guys have been at it their whole lives. Oh, wow. It's like looking back into the past. <laughs> yes, indeedy, Candace. You know, <laughs> these people are really getting into it. Uh, none more so than this festival newcomer here. His name, uh, you know, um, I haven't gotten his name yet. But <laughs> it's funny. He's, he's dressed in all black, and he, he hasn't said a word. He must be just like me, Candace. The strong, silent type. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you're hitting the nail on the old uh, blacksmith head. It, his outfit really does do the talking for him. I, I, I mean, <laughs> head to toe, all black. He, he, sm it smells, uh, he smells like, uh, like, like dry ice, like dry ice, kind of. And, and, and the closer and closer you get to him, uh, the, the worse and worse you feel. It's as if life itself is a terror. James, be a good reporter and uh, try to get his name. I'd kind of rather not. Oh, come on, James. I'm sure he'll love you. Unless maybe you rustled his cattle. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I saw my own death. Oh, my, oh my God. I, I saw my own death. James? James? Yeah, we'll check back in with James a little bit later on. Hey, Candace, you ever witness your own death? Yeah, once. Well, I guess I am just behind the times. I wonder what James saw. Something tells me it'll probably involve that mysterious man in black. Up next, we go behind the scenes at Olathe's outdoor sculpture exhibit. <laughs> Have you had a chance to go check out the sculpture exhibit down on Santa Fe Street? It is amazing some of the sculptures they are exhibiting there. Yeah, you know, I heard that this is the toughest year of competition that they've ever had for the sculpture exhibit. Interesting. I wonder if it's as tough as the competition to get one of the spin bikes in the class that I like. You know, I always reserve the same bike, and one time, Christina Erlinson tried to fight me for it with her fists, and she lost, even though I put my name on it first, which is ridiculous to me. They had to call the police. She filed a restraining order against me, but she can only enforce it if they catch me. <laughs> so anyway, I wonder if the sculpture competition was like that. Well, it probably is. The only bad part is not all of the sculptures could be showcased. So we're here to show you some of the sculptures that were rejected from the actual exhibit. Up first, we have a sculpture of John T. Barton, the founder of Olathe. Now, not much is known about John Barton, so it's just a faceless figure with a hideous sack body. Oh, you know, that's a really lovely tribute to somebody that we don't really know anything about. Up next is a memorial for all those poor children whose lives were tragically lost by peanut allergy. You know, one of the kids has a peanut allergy. Or bees, maybe? Something lethal, for sure. 
Anyway, up next, one of the hardest sculptures to turn down was this life-size chia pet with actual grass growing out of it. Unfortunately, some of the Purcell Farms cows got out and ate the sculpture. I've heard of a dog eating my homework, but cows eating my sculpture? <laughs> <laughs> That's a first. So, uh, you know, it ended up looking not great. Now, here's an interesting one. Initially, this sculpture of a 98 Ford Taurus was accepted into the exhibit. Its decaying frame, shoddy repair work, and tacky accessories were a biting commentary of the state of American industry. Wow, it really makes you think about the decline of American manufacturing. Yes, that's exactly what it made the sculpture jury think of. But then it turned out it was just an abandoned car that belonged to Travis Declan, who left it there because he couldn't afford the parking ticket. Up next, a bust of Ted Danson made entirely of GAC. And finally, honorable mention, an all-underground sculpture representing our deepest anxieties and repressed fears. Oh, huh. I can't see it. Exactly. It's buried. Much like your memories of being bullied. Ooh, wow. Really moving. Up next, we have some tips for how to keep your yards free of the emerald ash borer. We contacted a local tree expert who's going to help us out. You know, he told me that the official word for tree expert is dendrologist. Dendrologist. Sounds like a tentacle doctor to me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, gross. He'll be here after the break. My cat is my best friend, and he deserves the best. Even when he's trapped in a box containing radioactive material as part of a horrifying quantum physics thought experiment. That's why I buy him Schrodinger's cat food. Schrodinger's cat food is a great source of decaying radioactive material that will enable the physics of a thought experiment based on quantum uncertainty. When I put Baxter inside an opaque box with a can of Schrodinger's cat food, I can rest assured that he's getting all the nutrients he needs, and also that he's both alive and dead at the same time, or possibly in some linear combination of both. And whether your cat is alive or dead, he'll love the great taste of Schrodinger's cat food. Welcome back. We are now joined in the studio by Glenn Gundy. He's a local tree expert. Uh, dendrologist. Dendrologist. And he is going to tell us a little bit about how to protect our ash trees from the emerald ash borer. Glenn, thank you so much for being here today. Now, Glenn has never been on television before, so let's be extra nice to him, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I'm a little nervous, but, you know... I'm here to talk about trees, so. <laughs> well, don't you worry, Glenn. We do not bite much. Ah! <laughs> okay. I, it was just, it was just a joke, Glenn. Yeah. It was just, yeah. Sorry. It was just I'm joking. Just, so. I got it now. You know what? Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about the emerald ash borer? Okay. Um, so, yes. The emerald ash borer is a little bit of a beetle um, from a tree. And, okay, um, when you see it, you'll know it, because it's, uh, it's bad. Um, and uh, you can find them on trees, and trees are often found in the forest or a yard. Where I can are some, where are some? I can find where there's, I can find where there's trees. Um, you can find a tree uh, in a park, you can find a tree in a, uh, a, tr a beach with trees, and you can find a tree um, in, you know, Mayor Mike Copeland's yard where there's a lot of emerald ash borers. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, yeah, His you know. His kids actually brought them into school one day, and it's like lice, so I shouldn't have said that. So mm. we have to do this over, actually. We'll and this time I can do the joke better, too, because now I know it's coming. So I'm just real nervous. Uh, you I'm know, happy that we can do this again. Uh, Glenn, actually, we cannot do this again because this Ooh. is live. We are on air right now, bud. I didn't know that. Glenn, you know what? You're doing just fine, all right? <laughs> you know, we're on TV all the time, and you are a TV personality. Yes. All right, so why don't you just tell us a little bit more, you know, let's keep this train rolling, huh? Okay, okay. So about emerald ash borer. Yeah, bars. yeah. Um, well, an emerald ash borer is uh, found, like I said, on trees, and so if you do get an emerald ash borer, you should probably change uh, your clothes, which you're wearing, so clothes can include shirts, um, pants, shoes, hats, um, sweaters, and other shirts, especially if you have been walking around in yards with trees and sometimes yards with dogs, because like for me, for example, I, I will go over to 
um, my neighbor's yard and I'll pet their dog and sometimes I like to pretend that it's my dog and then I'll look in the window and I'll see them fighting and their last name is the Nevins and they live at 32 Elmwood Road and I don't know why I keep talking. I'm literally so nervous. Oh, all right. Well, uh, hey there, Nevins, uh, if we you're can, watching. No, don't, because I really, sh we should bleep it out, what I said. We can't bleep it out. It's going out live right now. Yeah. <sighs> You know what? It's okay, bud. Uh, you're doing just fine. Why don't we just keep going? No. Sorry. No, I have to stop. Okay. No, I have to stop because this is like, this is like giving me a flashback. Right now. This is like AP Chem. This oh. is like AP Chem when Alex Ribble said, you're a spaz, and then I said, okay, well, screw you. And then I put poison ivy in his potato salad. Ooh, boy. Ooh. And he got really sick. Um. Well, uh, Alex, if you're out there, I'm sure that Glenn is very sorry for what he did. No, I wasn't sorry at all. He actually passed away two years ago of stomach cancer. Oh. Wow. That had nothing okay. to do with me, but it, I wasn't sad about it at all. That's a bad haircut. You're addicted to gambling. Everyone oh, okay. knows Okay, you know what? My uh, social security we, number is 5 Okay, uh, uh, we on, are going now, to take buddy. a quick break, but hey. when we get back, we are going to reveal Olathe's top three fall latte flavors. Move over, pumpkin spice. These are all corn varieties. Well, let's check back in with Wild West days. You know, a lot of the locals here in Olathe get really into the spirit of the West. Almost half as much as some of the out-of-towners who come. Now, we actually have one of the out-of-towners here in the studio. No! Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> wow! Oh, did not see you come in here. Yeah. Wow. Did we, did he get Mike? Did we? Okay. Good trick. Well, uh, howdy there, partner. Have you been enjoying some of the activities uh, here at Wild West days? I've been tracking a man. Well, there uh, certainly are a lot of interesting uh, people here in Olathe. How long are you in town? I'll be here until the last rays of the setting sun dip below the horizon. And in the quiet, moonless night, I'll slip out of town, only leaving the trail of dead that would even make the demons of hell cry. Wow, fast turnaround time there. Uh, uh... Are you sure you're gonna have enough uh, time in Olathe to do all the things you wanna wanna do? Um. Well. Um. On the uh, on the show, we like to recommend uh, local things in Olathe to um, do to out of towners. Well, uh, to do for out of uh, for out of towners out to, of do. to do. Yeah. Um. What's what's your favorite thing that you've seen since you've been here? The life slowly leaving a man's eyes as I strangle him to death. Well, that is something that I have never seen here in Olathe. <laughs> but I'm, I am going to call my parents and uh, just tell them I love them after this. Your parents don't have to worry. Okay, cryptic. Somehow, that makes me feel worse. Yep. You seem like an honorable man. That is the best costume that I have ever seen at Wild West Days. Um, uh, did you make that or...? Buy it or? Is on the same. I'm sorry, I think I'm going to throw up. Um. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have. Uh, <laughs> uh, it would be an honor for you to bear my child. Oh, boy. <sighs> um, I was talking to you. Uh, that is unsettling. Deeply, deeply unsettling. I brought the blood of my victims for you to drink. Ah! Uh, I hope everyone is having a great time down at the Wild West Days this year. We'll be right back. <laughs> so 
software and mapping giant Garmin is breaking ground on a new super headquarters right here in Olathe. But there are some people in town who don't think Garmin is quite so charming. Lena Goodwin is the founder and currently only member of the Keep Garmin Out of Olathe Society. Now she has been out there protesting for weeks ever since they made the announcement, but we are in luck because she took some time out of her busy schedule to come right here and talk to us about her cause. Thank you so much for being here, Lena. Thank you so much for having me, Candace and Mike. And might I add that I got here just fine without the help of any GPS. <laughs> oh, a good sense of direction yeah. and a strong moral compass. Uh -huh. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about what your worried Garmin might be bringing to Olathe? So Garmin is all about peeping, okay? And and I'm uh, I'm very sorry that I am the only one talking about this, but it is actually the truth. There's satellite cameras, oh, yeah. right? High definition street view. Oh, it's yeah. also Garmin can look directly into your private lives. Now this is interesting because I had always thought that Garmin was primarily a global positioning or mapping company. Yeah. Sure, 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 Candace. Sure, it might start off like that, but we all know, okay, Candace knows, I know, I know, Mike, you know, the temptation to look into people's private lives, to creep on them, the temptation is so great that we cannot deny it, right? The temptation to, to go out late at night and to, and to watch people through their windows with, with them being unaware of you watching them, that temptation. I, I, here's the thing, my husband, he has to strap me into my sleeping bag at night so I don't go out and watch the people, okay? And that is just the temptation we all have. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I don't think Everybody has that temptation. Okay, Mike, well, obviously I know that you're a TV personality and you have to keep up appearances, but guess what? I am not, so I do not have to lie. Everyone is tempted by this. There's nothing more titillating than going out late at night, preferably around 6 p.m., and watching people inside their homes, and they come home, and they make dinner, and they're a family, and here's their, like, they have the, the burner. Do you know how many lean cuisines I have seen Sofia Gonzalez eat? over her sink, Garmin is going to see that. And maybe they watch a movie. What fun is that? They watch a movie and guess what? Sometimes they even undress, okay? No more Garmin. Keep Garmin out of our laundry rooms because they're going to see our dirty laundry. Oh, and guess what? The worst part about it is, is that Garmin won't share the footage they find with taxpayers like you and you two and you at home. Well, you know, I actually, I happen to have a Garmin watch that I use, and um, I'm, I mostly just use it to track my runs when I go running, or sometimes hikes. I actually didn't know that they, that they did that. Yeah, uh, this one's really great. This one you can hook up to a heart monitor, actually. Oh, wow, that is, yeah. that's pretty neat. Well, I think that's about all the time we have with Lena. Let's give her a nice Olathe. Thank you for coming down here to the studio. Thank you so much, Lena. And you know what? I actually think that that is about it for us because my kids are still tied to the meter and it is about to expire. Until next time, I'm Mike Watley. And I'm Candace Kostopoulos. And I'm Lena Goodwin. Garmin won't give us the footage. And this has been Good, Good Morning, morning Olathe. Olathe.